was that spooky? Did you think I was a ghost? No, of course you didn't. It was just a bit of trickery on our part, wasn't it? But a lot of people really believe that ghosts exist. They think they've actually seen them. Is that right? Have you seen a ghost, Jackie? Um, you, I suppose you could call it a ghost, but in actual fact, I was very young. I, I didn't fully understand what was happening, but I was asleep one night. I was in a, a, a really deep sleep, what they call a REM sleep. And for, for some inexplicable reason, I just woke up, just woke up. And I thought, you know, what's happening? I looked around the room, I uh, looked up to the ceiling. I thought, this is silly. Why am I not asleep? And I sort of scratched my hands. I thought, yeah, well, I'm awake. Then all of a sudden, I thought the room was on fire. I saw, like, some smoke coming out the corner of the room. And I sort of looked. I thought, oh, my God, upstairs, flat's on fire. And the smoke was coming through the ceiling. And then all of a sudden, I looked more, more carefully. And it wasn't smoke, it was mist. A very fine, tumbling mist, starting off very small and then gradually forcing its way out. Through the mist was like two figures coming towards me. I thought, this is silly. You know, I'm, I'm dreaming it. So I was clawing my arm to make sure that I was awake. And I tried to wake my husband at the time and, and I, I couldn't wake him. He was dead to the world. And these two figures came forward and it was one small, one large. The larger of the two couldn't see his face. I know it was a man and he wore a white gown. And I know it's going to sound really stupid and silly and I'm not overly religious, but it, it looked like the epiphany of Jesus. And with him was a little girl, about three years of age, coming right with him, holding his hand. And he stood and he, he bent down to her and said, you know, as much as say, he didn't speak, but he ushered her forward. And so she came forward and any, like, any, like any three-year-old, you know, she put her hands on her knees and she bent down and she said, don't be frightened. Hello, mummy, it's me. And I, oh, I looked and I thought, this can't be happening. And the tears were bucketing down my face, literally. She said, I don't want you to be upset, but you've been really upset for the last three years. I don't want you crying any more. I've come to tell you that I'm happy and I'm, I'm well. Why had you been upset for the last three years? Well, three years prior to that, I had a baby, a little girl. Unfortunately, she died 36 hours after she was born. And I had her baptised and everything. And three and, years later? And three years this later... This three-year-old child? Yeah, she came to, uh, like... It's, it's, it's as if in my subconscious I was wishing her back, but without my own knowledge. What else did she say? And she, she just turned around and she said to me, she said, please don't cry, don't get upset anymore, Mummy. She said, I've come to tell you that you're going to have my brother and sister. And um, you're, you're really going to love them. They're going to be all right. Nothing's going to happen to them. But I won't be coming back again because I, you won't have the need for me. Has she ever been back again? No. Did you she, have a brother and sister? A year later, her brother was born, which is my son, who's now 21. And then five years later, my daughter was born, who's 16. And you were asleep all the way through this, Eamon. Uh, no. Sorry to say is this, Eamon is my second husband. Oh. So he only knows about the experience that I've told him. And my first husband, uh, he just thought I was dreaming. I was in a dream. I went everywhere. I went to the priest. I went to psychiatrists. I went to psychologists. I went to Church of England, Catholic Church. I went everywhere just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. You got your money's worth, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, had to, I, had to, I had to. I had to find out. I had this impulsion to find out if I was crazy what or if it was. What did you find out? Um, well, the only sensible answer I got. Real, I mean sense, but I had some weird answers given me, believe me. I mean, the Church of England said I've been divided by the devil himself. <laughs> so I, it was the Catholic Church, believe it or not. And I mean, I was christened Church of England. Now I'm a spiritualist. Yeah. I believe in spiritualism. But what, uh, did you, what did they say? What was the explanation? The, the Catholic Church was the only people that, that gave me a calming feeling of, of belief. And he said, you should count yourself lucky 
He said, yes, get true. on your knees yeah. and thank God himself that he allowed his only son to bring forth your child. Remember the saying, suffer little children to come unto me. Did you, you, you say? said you felt very nice about it. You felt, you felt satisfied. I had a couple of, well, about three or four experiences. Um, the first one was actually shared by my husband here. Mm. Uh, we were coming home late one night and it was very, very wet, a bad, winter, bad winter's evening and we were driving along a lonely country bypass with no traffic or anything nearby, uh, no houses nearby. And through the rain, I became aware of a figure ahead of us standing on the side of the road. Now, people don't walk along there. There's no pavements or anything. Uh, the figure was facing us. It was a man. And as we approached, he had long, dark, sort of curly hair, very long and he was wearing what appeared to be a ruffly shirt in white. Below that, he seemed to be in black trousers, or I wasn't quite aware of what he had below, but it was dark. But he had very piercing eyes. And as we approached him, these, this was some time ago, and we used to give lifts in those days. We don't ever do it again now. But we used to give lifts, and I automatically assumed that John would um, stop and, and give a lift give this chap a lift. As we approached, I felt John lift his foot off and slow down a little. And then as I looked at this person, he looked directly at me and he had very piercing eyes. And I felt ooh, just a bit of a shiver. And I didn't say anything. John didn't stop. We drove on. Now, John didn't pass any comment and nor did I. A little further along, I thought, that's odd. That guy wasn't wet. Where did he come from? Where did he come from? Well, who knows? I mean, it struck me at the time that these it was the, fancy the circumstances dress. didn't add up. from a fancy dress party. Yeah, no, you two had probably been to a party well, and had a drink. Well, we thought of all the logical explanations. <laughs> but but you'd been drinking, like, you two, though, hadn't no, you? No, no, but I'll tell you another one about it. You gave you, me the sorry. creeps, and that's why I put my foot yes, down again. You, you somehow instinctively yeah, know when things man. don't add up. You're a sensible bloke, aren't you? You're a sceptic. Was he a ghost? Did you see a ghost? I'm prepared to believe I might have done. Because the circumstances were so unusual, he didn't seem to be wet. He was teeming with rain. Nicholas, have they it, seen Was ghosts? it dark when you saw this figure? Yes. It was, it was dark, and what sort of time was it? What oh. time was yeah, it? Yeah, roughly. So late at night. Late at night. Very so late past late 11 o'clock. Past midnight? Could be, yes. Yeah? OK, yes. and how fast were you driving? Maybe sort of 40, 40 50, 50, 60 miles an hour? Yeah, 40, yeah. 50, 50, something like that, yes. OK, so you're, you're driving down limit. a road at about 60 yeah. miles an hour, yeah. at night, late yeah. at night, yeah. in the pouring rain, yeah. and you can say for absolutely certain yeah. Yeah. that he was not at all wet. This is How do you know? So How do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, all right, well, I tell you the next piece along. This, and I hadn't had a drink because this was before I had a drink. We went into our local <laughs> wine bar. Just a minute. We went, please, darling. We went into this what local you mean, wine please, bar. What's she doing to you? <laughs> get, your, get your hand off his knee. <laughs> oh, she's put it on mine now. Maybe he's told him why it wasn't wet. Well, no, but I'm just trying to but tell why, him why about the... Why wasn't he wet? He wants to know. Well, I don't know if that is why. How do you know he wasn't wet? His well, hair was all loose. Well, he didn't look wet. Sure oh, because, because, because his hair wasn't plastered yes. down. His hair wasn't plastered down. Yeah, he no, looked right. So, I mean, he, I mean, you know, it, it's not impossible, though, that you actually saw a real figure. But in the darkness and in the rain, I mean, it yes. would be quite obscured. Late yes. at night, when you're yes, both quite I tired quite from driving, you see a figure, and it looks a little unusual. Yes. And... You know, I think, to be honest with you, perhaps you didn't notice that he wasn't wet until well after he'd passed. Is that right? Well, did you I notice he... No, did you really him, did you so think about it after you'd passed so him? Yes, I know, but what the mm. point was that when you mm. think about it, there was no car before or after Well, maybe he'd gone into a ditch. I mean, I, maybe, maybe he'd gone into a ditch and was trying to find a petrol station. Uh, do, well, these well, ghosts, well, do these ghosts... Do these ghosts... Obviously, there's sceptics there, but uh, and, and Nic Nicholas, is there, do these ghosts exist? Well, they got one on film. Um, you got one on film? Yeah. <coughs> um, they got Tell back. me about it and we'll show the film. Well, I got back one afternoon and um, my back door was wide open. At the pub? At the pub, yeah. Yeah. And um, obviously the alarms were all set. And, um, this is the pub. This is the pub, yeah. 
And tell me what happened. I wasn't we'll drinking at the time. Either. You weren't drinking no, at the time. Oh yeah, we all believe that, <laughs> don't we? That is proof as well because his hair, yeah, his hair was straight like mine before. It <laughs> wasn't pretty, <laughs> no. <laughs> and he's dyed it black as well. It was white, really. <laughs> Tell me about Eddie. Anyway, right? um, we got back, the door was wide open, we thought we had an intrusion, you know, someone broke in, you know. The alarms hadn't gone off, and um, we reviewed the security tape, and just before the door opens, is um, what appears a figure to walk across the room, and just disappears. We've got this figure now, on video. You didn't see, obviously this is, subsequently, you've recorded it. Yeah, um, this is an enlargement of is a split screen on the um, There you can security. see. I uh, can't actually see anything, but I can kind of see, I think we've well, freeze framed now. If you uh, <coughs> can we it, go back and yeah, do it again? It back, you can actually see from the, the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, let's let's go back and see it again, please. And tell me tell us what we're seeing. Can we get this? Yeah. Um, what do you have now? Is uh, just before we come back in, there's a figure just appearing on the bottom walking. You can see it in the slope right in the corner there, and he just walks to the end of the bar and just disappears. If you look at it close up, it does look like the sort of yeah, butt ducks, the back end of the guy, the butt ducks and the, the bottom of the legs, you know? Richard, what's going on here? Could you see it? Uh, well, I, I could see a fi I couldn't see a figure, but I could see, I, I could it, see movement. Uh, I could see it, like a gust. It's, it's very ambiguous. Um, what, what uh, We investigated this particular case because it's the first time that a ghost would have been caught on moving film, if this was, was uh, <laughs> true. Um, what it appears to be, in my opinion, is that in order to get into the pub, uh, you have to walk through two doors that are at right angles to one another, which have glass panels in. And as you open one door and then the second door, that casts a shadow onto the floor. Yeah, but how do you explain the back door opening up with the, the alarms not going off? The, the alarms only trigger okay. when the actual door is open. Okay, well, perhaps we'll move on to that in a second, but, yeah. but for the, the moment with Fine. the tape, um, what you get is a, a, a sort of ambiguous pattern of light going across the floor, and I think that's what's on the, the tape here. This, the second thing was that the back door of the pub swung open quite suddenly and the alarms didn't go off. And, you know, it's just possible on that particular day you didn't set the alarms. The, the door isn't part of the actual alarm system. Um, and so it's very difficult to work out whether that was a ghostly presence or just somebody being a little bit forgetful. Well, no, the alarms did go off when we, re when we returned. I mean, it was after the, the only reason that uh, we reviewed the tape was because um, we thought we had an intrusion. Mm. But there's nobody there, you know. And that was that's a security tape. Oh yeah, yeah. And that yeah. so it wasn't something you said. Oh, that no, happened it was, and you saw well, it. Well, we just. Do we you believe the ghost exists? Well, there's, there's a lot of strange uh, happenings going on there. But, you know, certainly. But um, do you believe the ghost exists? Is that a ghost? Well, I can't explain that. You can't um, explain. Uh, can, I just, so uh, can I just say one thing? I kept the pub before Tony. <coughs> Tony moved in after me. Yeah. I like. <coughs> I never seen any ghosts. I'm, I'm being totally honest. With you, okay. <coughs> but we did have experiences. You know, like. Uh, on more than one occasion, like, you know, there'd be people running up the stairs and kicking the doors where the alarms are set. I know it sounds crazy and people may think about Wally was saying it, but it, it actually happened and I believe in it, you know? Well, you heard these noises, you heard yeah, people well, running upstairs, you it, heard it doors. It was like sort of scampering, running up the stairs and really kicking the door heavy. I mean, I was in one room, my girlfriend was in another room. It happened one night when Tony was upstairs or my cousin was there before. Mm. It's, it happened about seven or I, six, I get seven alarm, many times. I get alarms going off like five o'clock in the morning telling me that Zone 7 had an intrusion. <coughs> zone 7? Yeah, which is <laughs> <laughs> And when you get there, there's nothing there. <coughs> Zone Seven's not even belled, yeah? Do they exist? I said they exist, yeah. This is a book that appeared in my house. I have many items that appear in my home, and this was one of them with a psychic message written inside it where it <coughs> says... Hold up, leave that there for the moment. Let, let my friend next to you hold right. that for you, and you can always get it. Let's show you the book. The book is Alice's just... Adventures. In Wonderland, dated 1867. What do you mean it appeared? It's called an apport, and a port when an item or an object appears through time and space as we know it, mm. in a place where we wouldn't normally find it. Yeah. Now, I've been having a series of apports for the last three years with my home. Up to date, I've had 16 cannonballs, over 3,000 coins. What do you mean you've had 16 cannonballs? What do you mean? <laughs> Listen, up to, I love it. Up to date, I've had 16 cannonballs. If Where are the, have you got these cannonballs no, with No, your you? mate said I couldn't bring it down here. I'm very sorry about Why that. Why do you mean my mate? Your mate. Which mate? Well, I don't know there's that many here. I brought them all here for you, and then I got told. Well, you've got them here? I've got them here, yes. Oh, well, we'd so like them brought over, please. Yeah. Please, can we get them over, and I'll show them. How big are they? They're, in, uh, they're about four inches in diameter. They're Why in my you? black bag. Well, I asked to bring it down here. I was told well, I couldn't bring it down here. I know that. Okay, right. And okay, I can... well, we're going to get them and we'll show right, them if 
before the end of the show is my bond. Of course, you and do. when you I say you. good, what do you mean? oh, Cannon, do you believe? Of course, me? I do. Cannonballs just appear. Cannonballs just appear. Where do they appear? They appear in my cottage. I live in a small village called Blackford near Wedmore in Somerset. And they just suddenly and they've been appearing for three years. Not through the windows. No, through the not walls. Not through the doors. Through the ceilings, because like my friend oh, no, no, here. Come wait on. a minute. All right, I've got a burglar alarm system as well. You leave holes if they come through the walls. Well, they leave holes. See, what if they didn't materialise and dematerialise and maybe change the molecular structure? Archie. Now, wait a minute. Got this. Before we have Archie. Yeah. Before, before we have Archie. Archie. <laughs> Archie. Archie. You can't come first. through the wall yet, no. Archie. <laughs> <laughs> because I've got one more thing to write. Then we can uh, add Archie. You can talk right. to Archie. Go on, Archie. We've had a remarkable cross section. We've had people. No, we've had people who have seen ghosts. I don't like the word ghost. I rather prefer Sorry. apparitions. We've had people who have had apports, they say. We've had people who have indulged in a fine frenzy trying to explain these away. And the point is that all this has been done before. It's been done for a hundred years. The first survey But do they exist? Do the these first, cannonballs of his... No, let, I am saying that apparitions exist. About 15 to 20 percent of human beings have seen an apparition or heard something or been touched by someone and then subsequently they found that that person could not be there. This has been the subject of large surveys for the last hundred years. But that's what's important. We're talking I about... I cannot, I cannot if... judge this gentleman's No, you have got my report on it though, haven't you? Because, because I, did I have send not it investigated yet. it, so I therefore can have no opinion on it whatsoever. That's right, but I see, this is what people need to realise. We all need to have an opinion on it. We all need to open our mind. Often when people say it doesn't exist, it can't happen, all I ask is people open their minds. One day I had a friend with me after I'd had a fall, or shall I say it's 3,000 coins. All coins of various sizes and shapes and values. And my friend openly, like my friend here said to me, why can't we see them appearing? And as she said that, your the cannon... coins start... Never mind my cannonball. Your cannonballs have just <laughs> appeared. <laughs> <laughs> on cue. Come on, Pat, Patsy, bring them straight in. I mean, they're heavy... Ba These aren't cannonballs. Well, I call them These cannonballs. Are bowling balls are well, heavy. Are they heavy? <laughs> right. and where that's... would you play balls? Can we just have a look really at heavy. this well? It is very heavy. It is because very heavy. there's another significant... How many of these have we got? We've got a bag full over there, obviously. 16. 16. But if you also note... Let me yeah. finish my thing about the coins. <laughs> right. on. We saw oh, the oh. coins physically appear on the roof of my healing sanctuary. No noise, no change in vibration, no squiggle like we see on Star Trek or anything like that. In an hour, we saw 31 coins appear. Frank? I mean, you, you, the professor here was saying that we've got to believe the evidence that we've seen. I don't, we haven't seen any evidence. I mean, all, all we've seen is someone who's seen a, a suspicious looking hitchhiker. Well, I mean, every hitchhiker I've ever seen is suspicious. Been <laughs> <laughs> you what, been you're missing, what you're missing, oh, yeah, what you're missing, I think is important. Hang on, hang on, hold on, please. I think what you're missing, what is important, is if you look at it maybe here. from the angle you're looking at it, and if we look at it when the lady and gentleman were in the car, when you're driving a car, you're taking everything into consideration. And it's in that split second that she saw that gentleman, she saw that spirit. Our friend well, here said I, she well, wasn't well, 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 I mean, that's not evidence, is it? I mean, you actually went looking. A ghost, looking, what what a ghost on a video. What what do you I mean, call this bring evidence? his coins, <laughs> bring his coins. We got his coins. I mean, I don't know why you didn't walk on with all. You're causing me a lot of trouble, you know. She wouldn't let you. Your mate. My mate. Frank, he's got coins as well. I mean, I could say that people were dropping cannonballs into my house. Well, I mean, that wouldn't, that wouldn't necessarily what, mean it was true, What do you would understand what it was? What do you, was? What do you be able moment. to say what you believed it was? This is the problem. Me, right? But I don't because know what because these coins are. Because, 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 because you think you're a liar. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. you are. He may be confused. Listen, I'm saying... He may be confused about what's actually happened. No, I'm not confused. I'll tell you, listen, I was a fireman all my life. I give up my life to dedicate my life to spirit. And I look at these, these are rewards for me. If you look at this one... We can't get this coin back over. Why can't they give you something useful? You're a ghostbuster, Robin. Is he confused? Is he a liar? Or is Frank right? I don't think he's either. I don't know what sort of evidence the sceptics would ever accept under any circumstances at all. So we commonly we it's a waste of time evidence. trying to give them any. We caught, a colleague and I caught a poltergeist activity with Dutch television a month ago, and a bed depressed itself before 
the hard-bitten media people and cameras. We've also got photographs, for example, of, of uh, uh, Butterfly's nightclub in Oldham, where a ghost is seen on a moving video going down a corridor, setting off the security system. It's in Peter Huff and January... Oh, I'm not supposed to mention books, have I? Anyway, it's in a book that you can get. And you'll see you a still... The book. Oh, it's called Afterlife by Jenny Randalls and Peter Huff. And there's a picture of this guy walking down a corridor, breaking the infrared beam on the moving part and setting it off. That's why the police were called. And I have tons of evidence of this sort, but it won't be accepted by somebody who doesn't want to accept it. But most of us who are rational and objective and think we've got a scientific mind and yeah. want to look at the evidence and the facts, and that's what Frank was doing, yeah. um, will accept evidence if it's kind of conclusive. And it's, uh, we, we accept evidence that the Earth is, is round and, the, and gravity because we know it, because it can be proved by physics. Yeah, people accept that because it, it, it eventually it's overwhelming. I mean, Lavoisier, for example, held up science for 200 years because he said stones don't fly around in the air and you can't have things which we now accept as meteorites. You went looking for the evidence in Madame Tussauds, Frank, didn't you? What happened? Why did you do it in the first place? Well, it's just something that's been held out as a challenge. I mean, Dickens first suggested it about 150 years ago that you know somebody ought to spend the night in the chamber of horrors, and nobody's been allowed to do it until you know a couple of weeks ago. And why did you do it? I just wanted to see if it would, how frightening it would be. I mean, it's supposed to be haunted as well. But let well, I mean, let Frank finish. It, Frank, <laughs> and was it? Were you, were you frightened? No, the only frightening thing about Madame Tussauds is that so many people spend good money going there to look at uh, waxworks that don't really look like <laughs> the people they're supposed to. But look that's like. the place you'd expect to see a ghost. <laughs> of course. I mean, you wouldn't expect because there's all the kind of every, everything. Terrible, Kilroy, happened there. nonsense. Okay, if I may say so. What? Can I? No, <laughs> I just. Frank was talking nonsense. Take that no, you can, Roy. I do take. Take the, talking to Frank. I'm um, going to the um, going to uh, Madame Tussauds and sitting up there with a whole lot of stuffed dummies is very much like um, sitting amongst some papier mâché iceberg and said, oh, "I didn't feel cold in the Antarctic." <laughs> Clever bugger, isn't he? <laughs> but, no, uh, the truth. Yes. People, people expect to be frightened in, in somewhere like me. I'm sure they do. And that's the place where they expect to see ghosts. Feel cold in the iceberg. People go to castles. I mean, this is the strange thing about ghosts, is that they all tend to appear in spooky places. Oh, I mean, oh wh really? Wh people wh come why, in populous why, places. Why are there no sort of hauntings at Happy Eaters? Or why are there no Karen, spectres Karen? at Specsavers or whatever? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> yes, I have an occurrence, actually. It was um, two weeks ago in a particular property two miles south of Kidderminster. Whereas my husband and I were actually talking to the night porter. We'd been speaking for approximately an hour on the subject of hauntings. And the night porter had told us that there were no stories whatsoever, any tales, anything strange at all that had actually happened at that property that he could recollect anyway. I went into the ladies' toilets, which I had noted before earlier on in the evening were extremely warm, and probably the only toilets I've ever seen where inside the ladies' cubicles they actually have radiators. So as I went into the toilet, I opened the cubicle door, I went inside, and before I had a chance to shut the door, I was thrown against the wall, my hand was flattened out, and, the only, and my feet actually came up off the ground. As my hand was flattened out, I felt a tremendous pressure on my hand, on my finger, and it was slow, it wasn't rapid. I screamed, and at that point it started to ease off. Whatever it was that was pushing me up against the wall was a lot taller than I was, even though my feet were off the ground. And it was, I can best describe it as a shadow, a shadowy figure, which was more or less swathed, and I still have the bruising on my nail to prove it. And as I went out a, to my husband and the finger, porter, yes. <laughs> when I went out to my husband and the porter who came running to see what had happened, my hand was just pouring with blood. And the experience I had as this was happened was a long, very long chain, as if it was coming from a fair height, rather similar to the ones that used to be on the old mills years ago. I mean, th th but this is part of the problem, is that that's a very strong experience. And But sitting here now, we don't know whether it was actually paranormal or not. Because there's no, me. Well, there's no, there's no hard evidence. If, if ghosts actually exist, we'd like to be able to see them on film, on a movie camera. If the reports are genuine, we'd like to be able to film the area and suddenly see these things happen. The is, oh, yes, and, but have you ever taken into well, consideration why these things happen when people don't have cameras, when they don't have films, and when mm. they don't have people with them? Well, is it a ghost but conspiracy? <laughs> I that's think that's it is. Well, why don't they have a I think you could well <laughs> be right. Well, 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 this is yes. the only reason why we haven't discovered well, any evidence and after 100 years of psychological research. And why don't they ever say anything? significant. I mean, if somebody comes to your bed in the middle of the night, I mean, why don't they tell you who's going to win the 230 next yeah. time? I mean, what's going to say in your book? What do you say in your book? Why don't they, why don't they say anything which you can prove to be right? The, the thing is, they do not, really not make an appointment to have a portrait taken. No, not at all. If they did, 
Well, well they, they've, they've turned up 16 times with the cannonballs. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's fairly <laughs> regular. Yes, but that's cannonballs. Cannon but we I have got some kind of evidence, haven't we? talked about poltergeists. Do they exist? Yes, they certainly do. In August uh, the 31st, 1977, my family and I had an experience which we'll never forget. It lasted about 18 months, and um, through as the weeks went on, um, poltergeist phenomena got really bad. What happened? Um, first of all, it started off with a chest of drawers jumping in the back bedroom where my brothers were sleeping. My sister in the front room and mum in the box room. And um, she said, pack it up, don't muck about, go to sleep. So with that, she went back into her room, sat with the boys down. Then she heard a shuffling noise. So she said, I told you children to go to sleep. So she got up, she said, right, that's enough, I've had enough. So she come in and she stood there. After it had already moved, the shuffling, it moved again in front of her. Nobody was touching anything. The boys were in the beds and she just said, right, up, out, coats on, and we ran. We went to my aunt's down the road. <coughs> and that was the first time we experienced it. And how many um, other times have you experienced it? Lots of other times through the weeks ahead. A lot of things happened. We've got pictures, haven't we? Yes, Take we us have. through these pictures. Mm -hmm. What have we got pictures of? We've got pictures of, tell me, this is the room. This is a room where me and my sister were sleeping in the front room. Yeah. Me on the right and my sister on the left. Yeah. And what would happen was, She'd be pulled out of bed regularly. We've got pictures of your, your sister. Mm. What's happening here? She's um, just jumping. No, it was like pulling her up and it looked like she's jumping, but she declares that she's being levitated. How did you happen to get a picture of her at that minute? Well, there was a camera in the room. What, all the time, um, waiting yes, for her? waiting and for her. And you're telling me that happen. wasn't she joking off no, the bed in no, joy? No. She's actually been... She's being pulled. She's being pulled. pulled. What yeah. happened to her when they stopped pulling her? Well, she just fell to the ground. She didn't go through yeah. the ceiling? No, she didn't go through the ceiling. And when no. she fell to the ground, did she hurt herself? Well, no, she just screamed. Do you believe this? Yeah, I see it. You saw it? Yeah. You really honestly it yeah, happened? Yeah, honestly. Cross your heart? Yeah, cross my heart. Yeah, my life. <laughs> your life? Yeah, my life. And whatever else. And whatever else. <laughs> You've also got... We, you, we also had somebody trying to f determine this, didn't we? We've got mm. film. Let's have the mm. film. Can we see the film? Did you used to live in this house? You did. Was it, was it more than 50 years ago? Yes. Did you, did you die in this house? Did you pass on? You did pass on in this house. Now why are you here? Are you unhappy? You're not unhappy. But why are you here? Is it because you want to give us a special message? No. You don't want to give us a special message. Are you having a game with me? <laughs> oh, right. As I ask the as I ask the question, are you having a game with me? It threw it threw the, the cardboard box and the pillow right at my face. Well, thank you very much. That was a very good answer. Archie. <laughs> I suppose we, are we, are we got to take that seriously? We take it very seriously because I had a case three years previously which was almost a simulacrum of this case to such an extent that also the two children in, the be in their beds were bouncing up and down absolutely flat, normal beds being almost bounced to a height of three feet and then dropping back and then bounce towards the edge of the bed and then off it whereupon they were badly hurt and whatever it was left them. Now when Morris Gross and Guy Lyon Playfair came to me about the case they were investigating, the this Enfield the case, case here, yeah. they kept me informed every few weeks or month or two. It was so similar and I had never published anything about my case. It was so similar that I was able to predict to them at times what should be happening next, and usually it did. What? I have to take the Enfield case as one of the best researched poltergeist cases in existence, and there are a large number of well-investigated cases. Mm -hmm. Professor Hans Bender and the Freiburg of the Freiburg Institute on the Rosenheim case, a lawyer's office, um, the Sochi case, investigated by Professor Murdoch Macdonald, 
I could go on. There Richard, are a large Richard, number of them. The, the this, I mean, this looks like it. Is there? We've yeah. got yeah, a colleague of uh, of Arch is yeah. there asking this poltergeist <laughs> questions and a tap for no and two yeah. taps for yes. So sure. we've also got other tape which we won't go through of voices and what have you. Yeah. Is, is this? For well, real. The, 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 the disappointing thing here is again what we've got at, at stills, the photographs were stills, we haven't actually got a video or a film of somebody actually levitating, we've got a still which could just be somebody jumping off the bed. Mm. With the audio track there, obviously that was a reconstruction, we've only got the audio tape, we don't actually, we couldn't check the room out, we, you know, we haven't got film of that. Because it was done a few years ago when there weren't video cameras around and all that sort of thing. So hopefully now if a similar case comes along we could get the sorts of evidence which would convince me there's something to it. Could you convince him? Well, I haven't got any evidence as such apart from my experiences that I experienced in my flat, which was the 5th of May last year. We moved into a flat. Um, there was three of us all together. After two weeks of things happening, um, they were happening when they were on my own, I was thinking, I'm going nuts here, I'm going mad. Um, it took us two weeks. After two weeks of me seeing things moving off the walls, the television, the radio, playing up, um, things flying off tables. I actually went to my other flatmates and I said, look, am I going mad? Mm. Have I lost it? And as soon as I, I spoke to my other flatmates, they looked white and pasty and they were looking at me as to say, you've experienced some stuff and we started to talk about it. My boyfriend came into my flat and his hair just went absolutely electric. And he said, you must come out of the flat here. There's something really bad in there. He felt like he was being strangled. Mm. Um, I'd been hearing heavy footsteps, dragging heavy. Mm. I couldn't explain it. I would always check. I would think that someone was coming into the flat and I could never work it out. There were things happening to me. Um, what kind of things? Um, like running the bath, going to run the bath and having drawing pins spinning in the bath before I've turned the water on. Um, I cooked dinner in the kitchen. I walked out of the kitchen, I got into the lounge and the saucepan that I'd been using was already in the lounge. It's still hot. <laughs> I can't explain um, what we've all been through. Has she been imagining all this, Jay? No, not at all. I mean, I was totally sceptical before the incident out of flat and now I just, I believe You're it. a flatmate? Yeah, same, same so we flat. share the flat. Yeah. We moved in together. Um, and the first day we moved in, stuff started happening. Um, like, uh, we had, I put a saucepan down on the top of a unit and come back to it later and it was halfway across the hallway. And just, and the, the footsteps up and down the, the hallway and the doors rattling and... And the feeling, it was a horrible feeling in the flat. You could, it was as if someone was pushing on your shoulders quite all the depression. time. And, and uh, we were all experiencing quite evil thoughts as well. It was like uh, we, weren't, uh, we weren't being ourselves. We and we didn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yes. well, I've been it. called out to houses where folks have had peculiar experiences. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that there's a supernatural. After all, 50% of people in England still believe in the resurrection of Christ. Of course, that's a physical manifestation. But there is a spiritual world if we take the Christian viewpoint. But what we really need to ask is where, where is all this going and how does it all fit in? Because there's not only a good spiritual world, but there's an also an evil spiritual world, and it appears to but me. But what we're asking is, does this exist? Is this real? I mean, is this what is she imagining all this? Is she what was well, it confused or lying with the two kind of uh, you can't, you concepts can't, we were dealing with earlier on? You have is to she, judge each particular on its own merits. But the fact of the but what supernatural, are the merits? well, the fact of the supernatural is the first thing you need to establish. If you believe a supernatural a priori, as it were, as a matter of fact, then you're going to be predisposed to believe or not believe. I exactly Pauline. what she's been going through. I mean, I, I've been suffering since I was 10 years old from uh, paranormal activity, mm. um, and I had to train myself as a consultant psychic to protect myself from, you what know... What kind of from activity? What was your paranormal activity? A, a mental, uh, mental <laughs> harassment, for one, which can What's, actually what, what make is, you uh, feel a different kind of what person. What do you mean by mental harassment? Um, Pure torment. You see, I, I don't see spirits. I feel spirits. I can pick the spirit world up. And I believe that we have all got a spirit. The, the people who are dead have got a spirit, but so have the living. And if living but people... we've all got uh, our own personal yeah, ghost. Now, yeah, we have. And if people go around well, with how, how do we know which one it is? Well, I could tell you. You know I'm You skeptical. call me in and I'll let you know. Because the point how is... How could you tell? Because I'm a medium and I can pick up... Um, 
things about your spirit well, how can and you somebody tell? else's. Why, you, why, why is your daughter don't having point. the experience? Don't point. Why? Because, <laughs> you know, no, it's not just my... You sound like my no. mother. Uh, don't God. point. Well, good. <laughs> what, there you go. Um, hang right. on, hang on. Nicola, what, 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 I'm frightened to use my fingers. No, 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 let me just uh, finish a minute, please, because I've got um, a daughter of eight who's also seen spirits. I've got a daughter of 16. Let I've Nicola, got Nicola. Let, let Nicola speak for herself. Nicola, what do you do? What happens to you? I've gone um, like paralysed quite a few times. <coughs> when? When I've been in the flat on my own. How do you mean watching. paralysed? I've just felt like something walking and I've gone like cold and hot and I can't shout for help, I can't move or anything. How often has that happened to you? About six, five, six times. What do you think's happening to you? I don't know, I, I, I thought maybe because I was living on my own I was scared. And <coughs> when, when you were Nicholas. having these things, did you have a, a presence at the same time? Did you get yeah. a strong feeling of maybe a malevolent, a malevolent presence in the same room? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having to can bring I, in paranormal can I just investigations. Make, can I just give you, throw up an alternative suggestion? What if somebody told you that that was actually an alien abduction? Because over in the States, My daughter's those been symptoms... My aliens since she was 10 right, years old. Right, so are they aliens or ghosts? Well, it's both, isn't it? Right, what so aliens are ghosts? Well, what authority is doing about it? If we turn to people, if we turn to doctors, if we turn to the medical profession, what do we get? We get laughed at. Well, I won't laugh at you. I won't laugh at you. One of the things we are doing uh, down in Bristol is doing research in precisely these sorts of experiences, which we do believe, perhaps, form the basis of some of the more curious experiences that people have, like alien abductions and sometimes ghost hauntings. But they may well be psychological and physiological, well, well, rather, than, rather, than, rather than spiritual. Is, is there a more serious question here? That, that the prospect that when you die, you may end up in somebody's skirting board in Enfield. Oh, um, very oh, funny. Silly. You should come round to my house. Don't point! I saw you point! <laughs> <laughs> that was. That was. That was. That was. You a went very well. Robert, Robert, can I just quickly say? Can I quickly you, say? Got, you got angry with? Yeah, I did because I don't like people's attitudes. When my daughter's suffering and getting paralysed by unseen forces, I've wrote five books. On the subject I'm telling you I know what I'm talking about I had to become my own specialist my own consultant see that man I shake his hand Richard it, no oh, Archie. Archie yeah that's what you call a gentleman <laughs> no I'm not messing you think it's funny don't you I don't you? think it's funny but I think well, some of the when a little happen, child seems, says to you seems, what they've seems, seen seems strange, and they're off for three days from school well, they are, it's they not are funny. strange and they're it's also very funny. disturbing well if they are strange they're can very you, upset can you and exercise they make you it's not right can you get exorcism well um, depends. There's different forms of exorcism, isn't there? Did um, you? I mean, my uncle happened? did it. Oh, he wouldn't I, even give me five minutes of his time. I couldn't get five minutes no, the way you talk. No, it's a, it's a disgrace I was, out there. If I you was want, very lucky. If you want help, it's I, a disgrace. I was very lucky in the fact that I managed to get some help. Um, it all started with a little eyeglass that disappeared, literally disappeared off the mantelpiece, lost. Also. Uh, my wife can tell you about some crisp packets and all sorts that were flying yeah. uh, through, through the room. And people go around calling and you mad and you get slandered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, no, well, it's a disgrace Matt. because it's and, not uh, on psychic people I'm and normal people. Yeah. 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 You know, you no, we these? get as much right as, as skeptics and, you know, use a harm in our children by having the, the attitude that you have got. Let, let, can you see. explain these photos? What will show you? All right, we'll show you the photographs, yeah? Go on, tell me about them. Tell well, me about them, they'll come up. I just like, you know, why I this felt... This is your son? That's my son. I lost him in 91. And why I felt this cold presence around me, she says, get camera, take a photograph. So I did. And what come up? And nobody can explain what they are. Tell me about Even it. Even Maurice Grouse. They've been to him, they've been to him. What is it? Tell us what it is. What do you think? That's your wife. Well, they've told me that's my son on, on, telly. on the television. Showing show. his face, yeah. yeah. And they're and unexplainable. This is, this is the face. <coughs> yeah, that's the this face. This is your son, presumably, after having grown older. Yeah, this is uh, 1994, that. The recent fault is... Is your you know, son not... present in your house? Yeah, all the time. How? Every minute of the day. He How? touched his wife and... What does he do? He took, if she says, touch my left hand, Sean, he'll touch your left hand, things like that. And what did you feel about all that? First off, she was terrified, but... We've had mediums in We've him. had this postcard appear on your television yeah. screen too. What's well, we, we used to go on holiday to Devon and we don't know if that is the Devon. But that just appeared on your screen? Yeah, just like that. And all that's mm. genuine? Yeah. yeah, well, I'm willing is to it negative it... to anybody in the world. You'd... Let them have a look at them. You'd rather it was proved not to be the case? It, it's been proved. They've been to America. They've what? been to Kodak. You know, you can't... Richard? Well, I mean, it's it's very. You puzzling. can have him if you want. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm not you can have him. This is your son. No negatives. Oh. Okay. I mean, it's it's very puzzling. I mean, it's, it's skeptics might argue maybe the. Can television. you explain it though? 
Well, I, I can't. I'm not a photographic no. expert, though. I mean, if you've been to experts and it's, it's anomalous, then that's the way it is. Yeah. But what, we, what the sceptics are oh, not saying, saying is that... you're saying such a thing. Well, what, what, what the sceptics are not saying is that your experiences are not valid. But you can't that, get the proof of that, But that, that's what you? they're after. They're trying to get as much proof <coughs> as possible. And what you're doing, what you've got here, is very impressive. Mm. If we had more of that sort of thing, perhaps we could work out what's going on. You're there. not very happy with your ghost, are you? Or your polar ghost, or your... Son? Well, she won when it first happened, but now... Nah, they've told her it's lad. She's not as bothered now. She's but we want shut like, you know, because <coughs> her life's not safe. You want shut? Yeah. We you want, want him shut. to go? Yeah. Why do you want him to go? Well, because he's touching her all the time, you see. He's there all the time? All the time. Are 24 you, are you, hours a day. Are you conscious that he's there all the time? Yeah. You feel him there all no, the time? No, I don't feel him. No, but your wife does, yeah. yeah. Can you be live happily, Humphrey, with, with, with a ghost? Are you happy with your ghosts? <coughs> I think I... <coughs> Pardon Humphrey, I Humphrey, 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 sorry. Humphrey, yeah. Yeah. I take part <laughs> the Richard's... Um, viewpoint. Audrey? We yes. are trying to find the I truth. Well, uh, can I tell you the truth? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I started. Uh, You've got a castle. We've got a castle, a wonderful castle. Have a look at it, come and see it. And Is it haunted? It's heavily haunted and always has been. What kind of ghost? Well, you know, uh, I think the castle first went in in the 700s and a monastery got done away with, so there might be monthly ghosts. And then my wife's family sorted it in the 1200s and did away with that lot, and so the armies of ghosts from that, and they're very sort of evident and very apparent. How are they evident and apparent? <sighs> I'll go on well, they come with the rest of the ghosts. Hands, and then uh, they come and check out my family. They do, yes. But th I think they're very oh, come protective on, now. They don't. They don't um, come and shake you your know, hand and talk I to mean, you? I mean, I tell you, Kilroy, it's curious, and, you know, one get mocked and knocked, <laughs> but you ask about protection. I mean, I was up a ladder when I was about... I did it 10 years, 15 years younger, and it was night, and I was loosening some stones about two stories up, <coughs> and suddenly uh, the stones came free in my arms, and I was top this ladder. I don't know if any of you climbed a ladder which you put to the base yourself. Anyway, it's a rocky thing. I find myself cascading through this onto rocks below. So. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I found myself, Frank... Uh, but it's, you, it's, it's Frank, not bad for Frank, business, Frank, is it, having ghosts uh, in your car? Uh, it, it, Frank, it, it gets the tourists in. Frank, it? it does get the tourists in. And if you're a pretty girl, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't help you at all being a model if you're a pretty girl. It doesn't help um, being a model if you're not a pretty girl. So thanks, Frank, but, for that help. Anyway... But, but you're but hardly an independent if I, if, arbiter if Frank, on the subject. Right, you had a great deal to say, so can I just finish but it, this? But so you're I not gonna, uh, Humphrey, you know what? You're not going to be able to finish. You're going to have to, you're gonna have to talk to the ghosts. But the thing is, you've got ghosts. They're good for you, and you're very happy with your ghosts. They're happy. And Go they're still not. They're we have to finish. Take care of yourselves. See you in the morning. If you've ever been the victim of spiteful comments or malicious rumours, Kilroy would like to hear from you. Maybe they were made by a work colleague and motivated by jealousy or envy. Call to on 0990 200567 if you've made catty comments and now regret them, or if you believe straight talking does no harm. <laughs>